so the other day I was wanting to travel back from central London to home and I had two choices. I could choose the bus, which would take a long time in rush hour traffic, but would be easy to get onto. Or I could choose to take the underground train, which would be much quicker. But my concern there was that because it was rush hour, the platform would be really crowded and then the trains would be packed and it would be a struggle to get on. And as I kind of imagined this worst case scenario, I could feel the anxiety rising and the strong temptation just to avoid the situation completely and just get the bus and put up with the, the, the longer journey. But what I decided to do was to just check out the reality. So I went onto the platform and, and in fact found that it was quite clear and the trains weren't too busy and I managed to get home quickly, which is what I wanted and I was pleased that I hadn't avoided on that occasion. So the relevance here for stammering therapy is that Avoidance is often a big part of stammering. So we talk about avoidance on different levels, from sound avoidance, word avoidance, situation avoidance, right through to what we call self-role avoidance. And this avoidance is very understandable because it's usually based on previous negative experience. Um, but as it's maintained, it it holds you back in various ways and um, left unchallenged it can it can keep you held back more and more from saying what you want to say and doing what you want to do so part of therapy is looking at disadvantages and advantages of different types of avoidance and ways to to move forward from that it's challenging work and so it's important that it's done in a gradual way and so that you can feel safe and it builds confidence.